My name is Kristen. I'm a part of KDA and the Rosita League, and you are watching Inside the Rosita League. Right, what you right. got for Quattro Rosas? And this is the uh, glass Rachel got me for uh, my birthday one year. That looks amazing. How are you two doing? Doing well. Uh, I think uh, both a little tired to start out the week, though. Yeah, it's been a long week. I don't know if it's like the weather or what, but the sun went down darker. is like messing with my, my rhythm, my sleep rhythm. How's the start of your week? It's fine. It's pretty busy this time of the year, Q4, and staying um, connected, I think, financially with some of the priorities that our, our uh, organization has, kind of like you guys. So it's all good. You know, it's job yeah. security, but it's been pretty busy. So. Nothing beats inculcating safety in the workplace. I think that's a fun thing to do and uh, uh, crushing bureaucracy like we do in the Rosita League. So a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of uh, parallels here, but 100, yeah. 195 points for Seattle KBA, tenth best in Rosita League history, and now your team is atop the total points scored, uh, seven hundred eleven. Was the outburst a fluke, or do you think it's a sign of things to come for your team? Oh, that's a great question, Kamish. Um. I think, you know, it's tough to say because at any given week, you know, you can backtrack any team and you can say, look, and they're playing the same players week by week and their points just go like this. See, I, I don't think it's a fluke, but I don't know if it's necessarily, oh, yeah, I'm, we're definitely going to score, you know, 190 something um, next time. I think it's just it depends, as you all know, as owners on the um state of the teams that the players that you have on your teams are playing for and things like yeah. that. Like, for example, um, when we played Andrew, I think he had a running back that like was RB one or whatever for Miami dolphins and he got injured. And so now Mostert is set to score 18 points next weekend. So I'm just like, all right, you know, we'll take it. Um, we've all kind of had our fair share of injuries and things like that. And when I say we, I mean, you know, members and, and team owners of the Rosita league. So yeah, that's a great, fair, fair question. Well, you've done it. Um, Arguably more than anybody else, KBA, uh, you do own three of the top 10 slots in history. So this is, uh, uh, there's something that you're doing that you're able to all of a sudden, uh, just the stars align and everything accumulates just at the right time. And uh, I have a feeling this might take on your team. I think that you drafted very well. It was a very balanced draft. You didn't take the quarterback too early. So you, your team has a depth of wide receivers and running backs that uh, some of the other teams don't. In the last couple of years, we'll have teams that will um, reach for a quarterback and then everybody will be reaching for a quarterback. Um, but we tried to be a little more disciplined uh, this year. I think you and Kamish, uh, number two, did a good job as well. Oh, shucks. Thanks. <laughs> well, the entire Innis bloodline is three and zero in week five. Oh, that's really, cool. D Money got his first win. Yeah, even though they'd be okay with zero and four. <laughs> there, there's just there's going to come a time when the Arsenio Bowl is one of your three teams. Uh, two to three Innis teams will be against each other, and that'll be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the way you've set this up, because, I mean, thanks to you, we have a diverse set of team owners and also, like, representation from a ver various, um, you know, families that have stemmed, stemmed from the ACOB clan. So, you know, like, we could say the same thing about you and, and Rachel. What was it last year, the year before? You know, your teams tend to do pretty well. And we got, like, the Davenports there, too. So it's, all, it's always fun yeah. to watch uh, sibling or, yeah, sibling rivalry. So. I think. One of the key words you said there was one of the unspoken strengths of our league, the diversity. 
I, I like how it tries to get in as many people from all walks of you know all walks of life from the family, and and I think that's one of the uh, that was one of the mission statements of the league. You know, I try not to take this too seriously either, but it really is our family in the in the skin of a fantasy football league, if you will, and it gives us gives us an excuse to hang out like this. So that's <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Um, yeah, it's an excuse to stay up past my bedtime. Aspen's asleep. <laughs> Bonnie's like, you can go to the office and t- just kidding. <laughs> well, James She's has like, a yeah. James has a saying that we get serious on Tuesdays, or we get deep on Tuesdays. And oh, so, deep on Tuesdays. So oh, I do okay. have a semi deep question for you. Are there any parallels that you can find between running your Seattle KBA? fantasy football team and managing a Boeing team. Oh my gosh. This is so funny. Um, (laughs) Well, I think it goes back to kind of what we were hitting at earlier. You had a question of, you know, is this a trend for expectations of performance next? And I think at the end of the day, you know, humans are humans, whether they're um, numbers on an, on a fantasy app or, uh, BEMS IDs in a system, um, humans are humans. And so I think when we think about parallels, it definitely gets a little more, um, you think about the relationship. So, so for example, and this is pulling a couple years ago, I think I want to say Kirk um, used to play for the Arizona Cardinals and back in college, like partnered with Murray and he was kind of a newbie. And never really, you know, figured out, uh, I'm sorry, never really got his place until all of a sudden he started to, Murray started to throw him. And now Kirk, you know, is really well. And now he's, I think he's on the Jaguars. So I think when we think about deeper about the relationships that the quarterbacks have with the wide receivers, it's kind of like how do the managers have their relationships with, to be honest, like the quarterback can do all they want. But if their front line's not doing their job, if, um, you know, the the routes aren't being run and the ball's not being catched, it's definitely a team thing. So I think that all the intricacies of, being a manager, definitely, um, if we want to force the parallel there, I think are bled into more of the relationships um, that we see in the, in the, I guess, you know, trifecta, Rosita League, NFL, and in Boeing. So, <clears throat> love Very that cool. question. Deep. That was so deep. <laughs> <laughs> how, hold on, how many drinks are you <laughs> No, actually, this is my first one. Wow. Okay. Did you put ice in it? No, I don't put ice in it. I don't put ice, I don't put ice in it. This particular Zoom call is also unique in how the three of us are the ones in the league who have been in the commissioner role in the past and present. Mm. So the next question is maybe not as deep, but it could be taken as deep. Do you like the direction of the league as it stands now? Uh and do you and this, and part B is do you see yourself in the commissioner role again in the future? Oh man! So I think I'll answer this first part of the question with something that Jeff Probst uh, sort of said when he was talking about Survivor season forty, and he said, "You know, I got to think about how to keep um, the viewers entertained and engaged after season forty, so we in a sense get twenty more seasons of Survivor." And I think from a um, I guess insider's perspective looking out, whatever. I think that's what you all have done a really good job at is, okay, how do we keep it entertaining? Okay, we're, we, I think we had like 12 teams one season and now we have 14. Um, and, you know, you're very, again, inclusive to a variety of um, of teams. So then I got a uh, shout out to James. I think he was a commish one season and he was yeah. at like a very uh, good the, Gambito, the, the Gambito's house. And he was like, oh crap, and he messed up on like some sort of thing and he just rolled with it. And then he was like, Oh, by the way, Nabil, now you're in our league. And like, just that like authentic organic moment, I think really sort of speaks to um, the things that are maybe not talked about, but that are kind of like desired out, out of again, relationships, but like a, a unique league. So I think um, that's in terms of the direction you have a little bit more like people are more comfortable with each other, I think. And people kind of tend to, uh, how do I say, you know, if someone's going to give you a bad trade, that person fill in the blank is probably this part, right? Like you kind of know now. So I think in general, the direction is um, 
inspiring and then you actually no divided. actually no i what? don't know who oh. you're talking yeah, about yeah i was no. trying to i was oh, sorry, trying to I, think who I she was talking out. about I, I don't know i forget is this working i don't know this isn't i don't think it's working i missed you what know I, I, yeah hello <laughs> <laughs> and then um i also think that the division of the west and east side was pretty cool too um just from a you know mlb nfl yeah know, pac 12 thing and and, um, and just so, uh yeah piggybacking off of that i like how the west and the east each side has kind of their own let's just say overall personality just oh, as yeah. an, uh in an just the competitiveness i mean you have the four and one teams on the east side and then you have kind of a more um compressed uh division mm-hmm. currently on the west side so it's uh uh it's there are stories that have yet to be told just due to the fact that it's a divisional uh, uh, two divisions in the league. We're going to see a good evolution of this league as time goes on. I think there will be some years where there's not as many, you know, videos, for instance, like for, I I don't think, I don't think this kind of weekly thing can be sustained. It could be, it depends on, uh, you know, say who steps up in the future. If they want to do that, I think a lot of, uh, a lot of this is also practicing for other um, maybe productions that we could be a part of in the future that are not related to any anything fantasy. So a lot of this is kind of practice, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And it's a good kind of practice, too. I mean, if we're not making money uh, off of something that's taking up a lot of time, we probably need to look elsewhere. But this is kind of building up to whatever <laughs> those opportunities are. That's my take. But I know, yeah. yeah. This is it for me. This is the big show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm peeking. But imagine if, because you know, Jake, he's uh, he has a lot of visual art talents that the family hasn't seen. Imagine if, say, he and Gracie in the future did a uh, something like this inside a Rosita League in the year 2045. Yeah, I mean, that would be cool. That'd be very cool. Yeah, and CJ with his uh, knowledge yeah. of the game, I think, would be really yeah. Uh, he he has a natural. He has future commish quality in him, <laughs> so it'll be fun mm-hmm. to see. This whole league was actually set up so that other people could step in that role. And sure, I look at it as like there are different types of quarterbacks. Some are like a Peyton Manning, where they can throw the ball from the pocket and be, be very accurate. Some are like a Geno Smith where you're just a, you're, it's not that you're any less, but you're a game manager and you're good with your feet. Right. So there will be different strengths that different commissioners will bring to the table, which actually adds to the flavor year after year. You want something new every year too. Yeah. You know, some people like to be a commish and then they leave and then they like complain about the rules after they left being a commission, but they don't have time to be a commission, but they just complain about the rule. But anyway, it's back to your question <laughs> earlier. I'm, here, <laughs> I'm, talking about, I'm talking about myself. <laughs> I'm talking oh, about myself, well, obviously. Well, well I mean, <laughs> well, see, the thing about that is that you and I were co-commish. I forget. I think it might have been 20, it was either, I think 2017, we were co-commissioners. So. And the decisions we made then are what shape, those are the main decisions right. that shape what, what the league looks like now. Yeah, I mean, you did a great job, David. I think your um, amendments and understanding the basically like if thens and also like, I mean, this is a pretty structured league. There's other leagues that aren't as structured. You know, you got to have certain rules in place. And um, yeah. I appreciate the CYA um, cover your assets. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, you did a you did a great job. You were um, seeking and, and, and speaking and listening. Um, oh, uh, you know, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'll promise not to say that because that's something that was on my checklist to say during this conversation here. So I'll delete that now. <laughs> <laughs> I got your back, cuz yeah. Um, you, around you know the number of votes for veto and thing like things like that. I think it's what it's two less than half now. So it's what's it five this season? Five so, this season since we have fourteen yeah. teams. Versus, do you, yeah. do you think and and based on that, do you think that's still too high? Just um, off the top of yeah. your head, okay. I mean, i I think I think it's not at because see, last year it was six, right, or the year before it was, it like was a little bit higher. Seven. It was it was okay. half. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I think it's tough. Um, what was it last year? Second half of the season, middle of the second half, we had a lot more trades. So I think until we start to see some more trades and active trading, will we kind of get the sense? 
you know, oh, it makes sense or it's too high or too low. I don't think it's, I think it's, I think last year was too high. Just if we think about like, um, and I know we have had this conversation before, but you have to really be paying attention. And some of our folks are in other leagues too, right? So it's like, you got to set your notifications on for the, during the season. You have to be really aware if you agree or disagree. And I know some people even do a trade and they veto their own trade. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But just kind of, mm-hmm. yeah. What? That's happened in I the Rosita League? Like- no, that sounds sad. <laughs> so, so uh, and then James and I have this saying that we both use in life, and that's paralysis by analysis. I mean, I think it's easy to really overthink a decision, whether it's managing a fantasy football league or even a team. Yep. But um, another another topic that James and I discussed in the past was um, IR, uh, you know, uh, injured reserve. Uh, Tell me ha- more. Having an, uh, a position with all the injuries in the league here, some leagues have uh, an injured reserve spot on your bench where, like, say, uh, JJ, Justin Jefferson is now, I think he's going to be an injured reserve. You would move him to the IR on your fantasy team and then still have the five bench slots for, uh, uh, you know, to use as opposed right. to just keeping him as a bench slot and have four other positions. But uh, James and I discussed that, and it's not really our preference. And so I think as long as he and or I are in the commissioner's office, that's probably not going to be uh, a setting that we decide to choose. Later on down the line, it's up to whoever is running the league if they want to mm-hmm. add that or not. Some it's up to your niece to. if she wants to change that or anything. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. into your 2050. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it makes sense. I appreciate both of your insights, too, because I feel like, well, both of you, number one, are really intelligent individuals. And number two, you're like running a, a almost like a semi-professional league. So it's like, I think you were talking about um, the implications of Omar and Lisa's tie like a couple weeks ago and how it impacts maybe a spot for the West side to sneak into um you know, the playoffs yeah. with that tie because the tie is a tie. It's not a win, but it's also not a loss. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. I really appreciate your, your all's perspective. And uh, I think it forces kind of less, um, uh, fantasy, you know, folks, um, to think a little bit differently. So yeah, whatever y'all think, I think it's been, um, a pretty fun, uh, league thus far or a fun run this season. And, um, yeah. So, but how are y'all feeling about the season? I'm feeling great. <laughs> as you should, James, as you should. I I could be doing better. I'm I still only have one win, but with nine weeks left in the regular season, I'm still only two games back in the playoffs. So I'm still well within uh the race here. I just need to I think there are a few things I need to improve on my end for continuous improvement, as they say in some companies, right? So <laughs> <laughs> Oh That'll gosh. happen. Yeah, so it'd be interesting to get a couple, see the buys kind of start to take place, and we'll go from there. But yeah, cool. Well, congratulations yeah. on your tremendous start. I know that your record doesn't necessarily reflect your uh, uh, just the the amount of points you've scored, but I think that's going to even out as time goes on. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, we're uh, playing Mara next weekend so definitely you know even though the projections i think were projected like 21 points more it's you can never tell yeah it's just a, it's just a number it's a big game <laughs> it's a divisional contest and so that's it's yep. huge in terms of playoff implications appreciate both of you thanks for the time thanks for coming on chris congrats on the uh big win hopefully thanks. that yeah. total points four will uh, help you out down the line <laughs> I will take it. Awesome. All right. Have a good night, you two. Thanks again. All right. Take care, Bye, Chris. Bye. Sorry for blabbering on there for for a bit. Oh no, I feel like longer with the guests is good. One ninety five to one oh seven, KBA with a just a breakout win over Seattle Felix, a huge divisional win as well. They're a force to be reckoned with in the West and the, they are. And the entire league. Yeah. They've been consistently scoring uh, big numbers. And uh, other than their 129 to 130 loss, which could have should have gone their way, um, they'd be looking a lot better. But 
Yeah. They're still um, third place in the West and uh, not slowing down. Uh, DJ Moore with 54 fantasy points. Um, and I think it's worth mentioning that if you take the average of KBA's weekly scores over the five week period, it's over 140 per week. Wow. So that is elite status at this point. I mean, even though their um, their record doesn't quite show that elite mark at this point. Yeah, still early. And uh, Felix on a little bit of a downswing after his hot start, but he's still uh, in second in the West. And uh, he has Jonathan Taylor, who you think will start to get a few more carries, do better for him. So I think he's uh, due for some higher scoring weeks coming up here. Yeah, we'll see how C.J. Stroud does for him the next few weeks, too. Yeah, that'll be fun to see how the Texans are this year. Well, here's a team uh, that has not been scoring uh, too well, but they did get 108 fantasy points. Middle child, uh, a loss to Mike in a Davenport showdown, 147 to 108. Uh, Middle child still in it, though, even though they're one and four. Yeah, um, I mean, 108 for them is uh, pretty good <laughs> uh, relative to the last couple weeks, but Mike's back, other than the week that he played me, uh, he's been uh, putting up good numbers, consistent numbers, and a uh, tough team to beat in uh, yeah. Mike. Mike, 4-1. and one. Yeah. Uh, just one of the top teams in the East, and uh, I mean, here's here's a fantasy player who is in multiple leagues every year. He knows what he's doing. Oh, yeah. every, every single move that he makes, uh, any transaction that you may see coming from his direction is calculated. So, I mean, he's one of the great minds, I think, fantasy minds in this league. For sure, yep. And he, show, he showed it year after year. All right. Town business versus super scrubs and probably the match of the week. Very low scoring match, 93 to 88 came down to Monday night. And I think the saying here is that the Raiders gain was the business bane because if, well, for one thing, Carlson missed uh, a 52 yard field goal, which would have essentially tied it between scrubs and and business. I think it was the interception at the very end by the Raiders defense that sealed it, that sealed the win for the scrubs. And so while Chuck gets to revel in the Raiders win, can't have them both all at the same time. Uh, business, tough luck, but you got your first loss. All right. And then up next, we have uh, State of Steelies uh, beating uh, Lisa this week. Um, State of Steelies uh, coming back strong. They were uh, struggling there for a bit, but uh, had a great week. And Jamar Chase is back. And mostly being that Joe Burrow is back. Yes. Um, yeah, the Bengals offense has been struggling, but it was nice to see him do a little bit better. And then in Tanny, Jamar Chase, that's his first round pick. I mean, he was, what, third, second or third? Um, hadn't seen much out of him right. all season. And then uh, Higgins was injured, the wide receiver, too, for the Bengals, so that helped. But, um, you know, happy to see your first round draft pick do something and yeah. then, uh, win in a big way. It's key. It's 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 key for your first rounder to do something for your team on a consistent basis. Lisa is uh well not out of it, um, obviously, and one and three and one, sixth in the east right now. But uh there are goose eggs, uh it seems like every week on her roster. Uh Gary Brightwell came up with zero points um in the game versus Miami. Yeah, so it, and uh she uh swept at least swapped out her quarterback this week, but uh Oh that's a positive. <laughs> yeah, but Dak uh threw three picks and uh I mean they just got the Cowboys just got destroyed by the 49ers yeah. on uh, Monday night football. So no f- help from uh Dak there. And then yeah. she's another one we were just talking about first round picks. Saquon so Barkley been injured for her, picked him at uh I think it was pick eleven. 
Uh, so, you know, once he gets back, gets going, hopefully she can get more production out of her first round pick. All right. Moving on to your win over Nabs. Yes. Another great score for you. 143 points over Nabs is 109. You're now four and one. One of the top three teams in the entire league and on the East, of course. Well, that's, uh, an accomplishment up through five games. So congratulations. Brock Purdy is doing some good, good things for your team. Yeah, Brock Purdy uh, ended up working out 34 points, and I think they benched him a little bit into the uh, fourth quarter because they were beating the Cowboys so bad. So happy that he's working out after uh, the Aaron Rodgers debacle. And we, meanwhile, Nabs is in the uh, middle of the log jam, which we call the West Division. Uh an okay showing. You have uh, some single-digit scores from some of the players that he needs to really step up for him. Absolutely, yeah. He got hit with a little bye week there. Two of his big wide receivers, and maybe even a running back uh, on bye there. So I caught him at a good time. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, Wu Tang versus the Grind. We have the um, the Wu versus uh, Wu, basically that bloodline sibling uh, rivalry. Yeah, uh, I'm struggling uh, in terms of a one and four start. And I have some work to do for sure. Anthony Richardson is now out for the next uh, few weeks, and it's going to be Trevor Lawrence uh, holding down the fort at quarterback for me. Yeah. And uh, I mean, 112, not bad. With a quarterback who's not injured, you're put, still putting up good points there. It's just you just keep running into teams at their best. Um, yeah. 157, <laughs> you could, <laughs> quarterback doesn't get injured, you put up 140. Still a tough matchup there with uh, Rach and June looking good. Yeah, it's the not so silver lining for sure. Mm hmm. Mara versus DC. James Conner went to the IR. Tough one for T. Mara, who have had some very good weeks as of late, including against me, by the way. Uh, but probably the big story behind this game is the overall deal. The DC Universe getting their first win. Absolutely. I mean, they were due for one either way. <laughs> I mean, when you have a team that in week five has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of their nine players scoring in single digits and yet getting the win despite getting only an abysmal 81 points, more power to DC. Congrats on your first win, DC. It's all think, up from here. Yep, I, I'm going to uh, say that their DC comic character is Superman because he is now back from the dead. They are back from the dead. <laughs> Love to hear it. All right. Well, uh, now any final takeaways on your end? Takeaways for me are um, just especially with bye weeks or just there's going to be a lot of volatility. You're going to have teams scoring big one week, low the next week. So you just got to try and stay consistent and trust that it'll even out in the end. But yeah, I think we're going to see uh, a, a big range in uh, what teams are scoring. I mean, you saw Chuck and CJ, they were they were scoring big, 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 and then they got their 80, their 80 point uh loss this week so kind of see how that all shakes out yeah how about yeah how about you what's your takeaway so on my end uh i would say that there are the mere fact that there are nine weeks left in the regular season that is a long time but the other side of the coin is there are only nine more weeks to make a statement for the playoffs and so now not that every one of these first five games uh was any less uh in terms of magnitude you know heading towards the playoffs but i look at it toward like this you know how in those mariner games there's this uh sometimes what i consider to be a semi-corny thing where they have the uh yeah the hydroplane race or the hydroplane the, yeah. the hydroplane race with the red red hydroplane versus the green versus the yellow. And there are two laps. And what happens 
in the first 95% of that race means virtually nothing. It's what happens in the very last, let's just, let's just say, five to ten seconds. That's the only part of the race that really means something. I have a feeling that's kind of what we're seeing with the league this season, where you have a lot of fluctuation with these teams. You're going to see some teams that are going to be rising to the top, uh, some teams that are struggling, maybe like a four-game, three-game win, uh, losing streak. It's going to get to the point where something's got to give. Uh, transactions need to be made. Uh, trades, I think, need to be made. There are some clear trades that could be made now that people are just not pulling the trigger. I'm not going to mention which teams those are, but I mean, there are some very clear. You can tell me after. Uh, possibly. <laughs> we'll see. I, and you could be one of them, too. Maybe. For the running backs, you have the haves and the have nots in our league. And the ones mm-hmm. that are the haves, they should have some advantage, especially these next few weeks here, because of just how bleak and how uh, shallow the pool is for available running backs in the waiver wire. So it's uh, it's going to get interesting with all the injuries that we're seeing. I mean, we didn't even touch on some of that. I mean, we have Eckler, uh, who's going to be returning in week six, and then Connor expected to miss multiple weeks. Justin Jefferson replacing the IR, Anthony Richardson on my team. Going to miss a month. A Chan with a knee injury. I mean, it's just it's looking bleak at this point for a lot of these positions. It really is, and uh, I'm worried about the grind. Uh, they're gonna when they get Eckler back and they got Kamara off the suspension. Uh, they're gonna be tough to beat. They're gonna have some pretty good depth at that position. Yeah, and I think that for some of these teams that have only one win. At least one of them is going to emerge as a front runner within um, just give it a few weeks here, and it, so it could be DC, it could be Wu Tang, it could be John and Noah. But the mere fact that they're only two games out of the playoff race, heading into Week Six, uh, it, there's just so much ahead. The marathon yep. is just only so much that far down. But again, uh, the other side of the coin is there's only nine more weeks to make a statement. Absolutely. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Um, I think of the, uh, of the one in four teams, you have the most consistent and well, you have the most total points for, and you have the most consistent weekly performances. So if I had to pick one, David. Okay. (laughs) All right. Well, we'll bookmark that thought heading into this. If I got to pick two though, I'd throw you on there. D money. 